I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Sometimes gateways lead to new places, and sometimes they lead to new life. It was in my late 20s. I was living and teaching in Istanbul and exploring Turkey and the region. It had been a fallow time for my faith life. I had temporarily forgotten the God I had known in my childhood, the God who had known me, had mothered me, who gave me hope. During graduate school, the airwaves had seemed so full of fundamentalist megaphones that I guess I was hearing the deceiver. And I had associated God with the more childish me, orphaned me, uncertain me. And now that I was thriving personally and professionally, I was a little arrogant, living as though I didn't need God anymore, or at least not the God I had been hearing about, the one who really seemed so hateful, who seemed to judge and exclude an awful lot of people. In fact, I was so far away that my priest noticed when I got married and during the homily said, make sure this isn't the last time you're in church. <laughs> Take note, preachers, what happens. <laughs> but wouldn't you know it, you can take the girl away from God, but you can't take God out of the girl. Turkey was nothing if not a religious country. The call to prayer rang out throughout the day, proclaiming God's greatness. From dawn prayer to evening prayer, God's time was always being kept. And reminders of Christianity were everywhere too. Constantine's Hagia Irene to Justinian's Hagia Sophia, their size, their longevity were mind-blowing. But it was a trip to eastern Turkey, to Cappadocia, where things changed for me. You know this region as Caesarea in the Bible, the cradle of Christianity. It had been home to large settlements of Christians since the third century. More than 700 churches have been counted in the region and many of them still with well-preserved frescoes. And so, intrigued but unsuspecting, during the spring break, I traveled with friends to Cappadocia. It was a long drive, made slower by all the other people crossing the gateway to Anatolia, on what was then the only bridge between Istanbul and Asian Turkey. It was bumper to bumper, Turkish and Arabic pop music played from the stereos and rolled down windows, but with no angry horns. The drive was beautiful and so slow that I honestly can still see some of it. The red, red poppies covering the low foothills, snow in the distance, children from nearby villages offering baked goods and candy and water people getting out of their cars to walk along. It was that slow. Shepherds and their flocks ambling along together. My friends and I shared in reading aloud about the places we were going to visit as we drove. Still, all this reading and the anticipation couldn't have prepared me for what was there or for what was to come. In the early centuries of the church, it was dangerous to be a Christian, and plenty of Christians were killed. In response, Christians in eastern Turkey dug whole cities into the ground beneath them. One city had more than 50 living chambers in it. Forced to live underground, these early Christians lived in vast settlements, several stories deep for months at a time. Hidden caves led to narrow entrances and long tunnels, not made for the faint of heart. Once inside, a rock gate, a huge millstone carved out of the very earth, was rolled across the tunnel, blocking the way in. 
The underground cities were complex, including interconnected household dwellings, deep wells, animal pens, long ventilation shafts, chimneys, and for our interests, chapels, monasteries, and churches. It was nothing short of collective genius. Penned together, they had created not just a place to live and be safe, they had created a vibrant Christian community. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. From rudimentary biblical images in the iconoclastic period to elaborate frescoes centuries later, the gathered made their life as Christians a celebration. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Deep down in the soft rock of the earth, through hand-dug tunnels and into the history of the church, I realized it wasn't the past of the church I was encountering. It was prophecy. I realized that I was only able, had the luxury even, to call myself a lapsed Christian, thinking, eh, I might leave it behind when it didn't meet my needs because of the bravery and enduring tenacity of early Christians like these. Surely they were people with families and friends and hopes and dreams, and they had risked their lives to go through a narrow rock gate to live in cramped and poorly ventilated hiding. But for them and other martyrs of their time, I realized in that moment the church might not still exist. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. The voice was there. And the message I got deep down in the earth, surra surrounded by the saints, was loud and clear. It was, what are you going to do for the church, Mary Carter? The word of God is never silent, St. Augustine said, though it is not always heard. In fact, as if anticipating the irreverence of my young adulthood or any of our errancy or waywardness, Augustine said, mark then, holy brethren, the usefulness of heretics, their usefulness, that is, in respect to the designs of God, who makes good use even of those. I'm not sure where you've heard that still, quiet voice in a similar way, if you've had a compelling call from the Spirit, but I do hope you'll share what carries you through these gates and what you feel you are called to do. If you find your openness to God blocked by a stone gate, the record shows that rolling those aside brings new life. God is at home, said Meister Eckhart. It is we who have gone for a walk. One should be so empty of all things and all works, both inwardly and outwardly, that one can be a place where God can work. That place is within your heart. That place is within your community. God is at work at you. Go through the gate and see the beautiful pasture before you. Amen. <laughs>